This is Nightly Business Report with Tyler Matheson and Susie Garrett, funded in part by TheStreet.com and Action Alerts Plus, where Jim Cramer and fellow portfolio manager Stephanie Link share their investment strategies, stock picks, and market insights. You can learn more at TheStreet.com slash NBR. Crude crushed, energy stocks slammed, the industry rattled by OPEC's decision not to change output, and that sent the sector into bear market territory. And Black Friday frenzy, bargain hunters hit the malls, but are they putting their money where their feet are? All that and more tonight on Nightly Business Report for Friday, November 28th. And good evening, everyone, and welcome. Susie Garib is off today. I hope you all had a very pleasant Thanksgiving holiday. Well, the Dow was able to squeeze out just enough of a gain to notch a fresh record close on a holiday-shortened day on Wall Street. But the big story of the day was another tumble, and I do mean a tumble, in the price of oil, rattling the energy sector and keeping equities from making even more gains today. Today's big drop in crude prices comes after OPEC ministers voted on Thursday not to cut production levels despite lower demand and an oversupply on the market. Now, some analysts expected the cartel to cut production to help end a months-long freefall in oil prices. They are down about 40 percent just since June. But no cut came, and oil prices spilled like they had sprung a leak. Domestic crude off 10 percent today, tanking at $7.54 to close at a four-and-a-half-year low of $66.15 a barrel. The international benchmark Brent fell another $2 to a fresh multi-year low of $70.15 a barrel. Now, with the price of oil plunging, how bad could it get in the energy sector? Bertha Coombs has more. OPEC's decision to leave its production levels unchanged at 30 million barrels a day is certain to unleash volatility in this market until somebody blinks. Analysts say at this point, OPEC is already producing more than what the market needs and more than its own production level of 30 million barrels a day. Number of traders say if we start to see any kind of pickup in demand because of low prices, that might help bring in some stability. But overall, a number of players say expect a lot of volatility in this market. OPEC's job in the past has been to help bring stability to the market by cutting prices. But at this point, they've brought prices down to a five-year low. And for a number of players, whether it's investors or producers, that's going to mean an awful lot of uncertainty and a lot more pain to the downside. Now we are seeing a totally different market where um, the swing in prices could be $50, $60 a barrel uh, into a year on a forward basis. So uh, this is going to lead to a rethinking of, of, of the way people operate in the industry. For now, consumers and the economy certainly benefiting from lower oil prices because it results in lower prices at the gas pump. But longer term, analysts say, it could also pose a problem for the economy. If producers in areas in the country where they employ a lot of people just can't produce oil profitably anymore, they'll have to cut back. And that could mean a loss of jobs. Bertha Coombs, Nightly Business Report, New York. And here's a look at how some of the biggest energy plays ended today after that 10 percent drop in crude. Uh, the oil majors among the biggest decliners, Chevron, the biggest single loser in the Dow, down nearly 5.5 percent. ExxonMobil off 4 percent. BP and ConocoPhillips also moving decidedly lower. Some of the hardest hit shale oil producers like Sanchez and Clayton Williams fell more than 25 percent today. And look at Laredo, down 32 and a quarter percent. The selling didn't stop there. Uh, producers of oil, oil field services companies, they fell hard. Continental, Marathon, Transocean, seeing sharp declines along with Schlumberger. But with jet fuel and airlines, and airlines biggest expense, shares of the big carriers, you know what they did, they moved higher. With United Continental and American up 8 percent, Delta up more than 5 percent, uh, JetBlue up seven and two thirds percent, and shippers UPS and FedEx are also seeing some very nice gains today. So, should investors expect more near-term volatility in the oil market? Our guest tonight says you can bet on it. 
Janelle Nelson is portfolio analyst with RBC Wealth Management. Janelle, welcome uh, and happy day after Thanksgiving. Let me, uh, I want to talk to you uh, broadly about the market, but let's begin with oil. How close does your spidey sense tell you we are uh, to that point at which oil company shares are a buy and the oil price might turn north? Well, I think what we need to see, Ty, is we need to see a response to the outlook for 2015 by the exploration and production companies. I just attended a conference down south, and my sense at that conference was there was a lot of complacency. Nothing gets a company's attention more than when the commodity price falls 10 percent in one day. Let's go to a, a broader question about where the markets uh, you think are headed. Uh, my notes tell me that you think we're in the middle, or the early innings, I should say, of a secular bull market that you think began in 2012 and 13. What does that look like, and does that mean necessarily that we won't have 10 uh, percent, 15 percent declines within that context? Well, exactly. Well, when we say a secular bull market, what we mean is that the markets get substantially better over time. Bull markets start when everyone is still crying in their beer at the end of the day. What we believe is happening is that the trend toward energy self-sufficiency, the valuation of the market, and the fact that most people are still skeptical of equities means that we're on a trend after 15, 16 years in a bear market on a secular basis toward better underlying markets over time. Let's uh, go to a couple of your choices, if we might. And and I guess your framework here is if oil prices uh, start to turn up, if oil prices mm -hmm. remain relatively stable, or if oil prices decline. So let's start with EOG resources, uh, which is the assumption that oil prices are at or near a bottom and start to move back. Why do you like that one, and what's your price target on it? Fundamentally, what we like about EOG resources is they're free cash flow positive, so they're self-funding. They're able to grow acreage without making acquisitions. Uh, thirdly, they're in a position where they have a footprint in the major core acreage in the Bakken and the Eagleford. And at even $40 a barrel oil, we, sell that we see them still getting a 10 percent overall return. At present, they're getting a 100 percent return on their core wells. We think the stock can trade well above where it trades currently, perhaps as much as $20 per share higher. Bottom line, we think the company is quality. You want to buy quality, because quality gets thrown out in the bathwater with the stuff that isn't so quality. Yeah, I've heard a lot of people talk about the uh, capital structures and the level of debt that some of the uh, right. shale plays have. This this one, you, you believe, has a, a very strong uh, and stable capital uh, structure. Oil prices Absolutely. continue to decline. Your second pick would be Walmart. It's had some nice runs here lately. Well, you know, as a girl from Minneapolis, it's not often that I would recommend Walmart. But here's what Walmart is doing. One, they're getting great opportunity from e-commerce. Their investments are working. Secondly, they're opening smaller stores in the most recent quarter. Comp store sales are up 5.6 percent versus just one half of one percent for the whole. Mm -hmm. And perhaps most importantly, the demographic for people who make $40,000 a year or less, low gas prices at the pump means more money spent at Walmart. And trading range pick is Lennar, the housing company. Quick thought on that one, Janelle. Bottom line, we believe that the housing sector is still in recovery, tepid recovery, but in recovery. Lennar has one of the best returns on invested capital in this space. Secondly, over the past six years, when most of its peers were selling land, they were acquiring land. And we think that they are a key company in what our industry analyst has termed the golden horseshoe. California, Oklahoma, Texas, Arizona, Florida, Georgia, segments that of the market that got hurt the most, right. they have done a great job picking up acreage. All right, Janelle, we got to leave it there. Now, you get busy and go to Mall of America there in Minneapolis right now. Okay, I Janelle? I will do that. All right, Absolutely. Jan Janelle Nelson with RBC <laughs> Capital Management. All right, let's take a look at Wall Street. Stock exchanges closed early uh, this Friday after Thanksgiving. Uh, ending the session mixed, little change generally, but again, the Dow gained just enough to finish at a new all-time high. 
You'll never get tired of saying that. The Dow up just a fraction, but it was enough. Uh, the Nasdaq added four points in the S&P on this mixed day lower by five. That translates, though, into six straight weeks of gains for all three indexes and for the just completed month of November. Uh, the blue chip Dow and the S&P were each up about two and a half percent. The Nasdaq fared even better, up three and a half percent, and that index is now at just five percent or so below an all-time high of its own. Some of the big winners on Wall Street today were retailers, many attributing uh, it to the fall in oil prices. Uh, but the move coincides with the other big story today, of course, and that's Black Friday, the unofficial start to the holiday shopping season. And with the major stock averages at or near all-time highs, gas prices at four-year lows and a brightish, brightish labor market, chief executives at some of the nation's biggest retailers are looking for strong sales. But I think the combination of rising consumer confidence, you know, the changes that have taken place from an employment standpoint, and the fact of the matter is gas does cost a lot less than it did a year ago. So I think the combination of those factors is certainly boding well for the retail environment as we enter this important holiday season. It's very value driven, uh, you know, whether it be a, a $10, you know, toaster or a or a uh, $20 sheet set. That's that's what people are gravitating toward. They're clearly gravitating toward the value. Over the next few weeks, our sales will grow every single week right up through the week before Christmas. Macy's, Target, along with Walmart and JCPenney, just a few of the retailers that finished the day higher, uh, and not by just a little bit. Well, the National Retail Federation forecasts 140 million Americans will do some kind of shopping over this long holiday weekend, and it looked like most of them got things started last night and continued into today as people rushed to take advantage of some Black Friday bargains. The crowds today, you know, it's not as too bad as like every other year. It's usually as bigger than this. It's all about the deals. I'm not finding like as good of deals. After the mall today, I plan on doing more shopping. Well, after tonight, I think I'm done. I think I'm good. Done. And Courtney Reagan joins us from the mall at Fairfield Commons in Dayton, Ohio. Courtney, how busy is it today? You know, I have to tell you, Tyler, as the day has worn on, the crowds have actually gotten a little bigger. I think overnight and in the late Thanksgiving Day hours is when the crowds hit up the big box stores. That's the Walmart, Target, Best Buys of the world for those door buster specials, some of those electronic deals. And then there was a lull in the crowd overnight. And as the morning and afternoon has worn on here at the mall at Fairfield Commons, we've seen the traffic pick up about at the level that I saw last year on this day when I was here at this very place. But I do think the traffic levels at the big box retailers was a little bit higher than what I saw, particularly at the one Walmart location that I visited. Lots of full carts. I counted 112 carts in line at one point and actually lost count. I couldn't get to the total end of the line, so there were more than 112. I just couldn't get to all of them. Wow, 112 carts in line. That is my idea uh, of, of a disaster. I would hate to be number 113 <laughs> or 112. Uh, tell me, what times are these malls opening and closing? Are they, was, was it open real early today? So this mall actually opened up at 6 o'clock mm -hmm. yesterday. It's been open all night long, and so that's why we saw these dips and valleys and peaks and the different crowds. Folks know when the stores are open, when they're offering different deals at different times. So there's reason for different crowds of people to come at different times. We saw a lot of the millennial shoppers here overnight and in the later Thanksgiving hours. And as the days worn on, you've seen more families and the kids coming out, too. Right. So these malls have been open and running for some time. All right, Courtney, thanks for very much, Courtney Reagan in Dayton, Ohio. All right, electronics always seem to be big sellers during the holiday season. So will this year be any different? Josh Lipton takes a look. Americans lined up coast to coast to buy as many gadgets and electronics as they could carry. This one, this one, no. So what were the most popular tech products on this Black Friday? Analysts say, as always, televisions were red hot. And this year, the ultra-high-def 4K TV attracted a lot of attention. If you want to sell TVs to the American public, you need two things. They need to be as big as they can afford and fit in their house, and they need to have the best picture that they want. And 4K really addresses the, this is the state of the art of the picture. If 4K was a hit, then that's good news for Samsung, which controls about 50% of the market. Samsung now sells several 4K models for less than $2,000.
Gamers were also out in force on Black Friday looking for deals. They shopped for games as well as consoles. And finally, analysts see Americans were buying a lot of GoPros, which now start at $130 and go up to as much as $500. They dominate the categories that they're in. And, you know, we've seen promotions on some of their older models for this holiday. Uh, we think they'll have another big, big holiday, just like they did last year. And it's not just televisions, games, and GoPros that likely sold like hotcakes. Smartphones were also expected to be very popular. Sam's Club sold the iPhone 6 for $99 with a two-year contract. For Nightly Business Report, I'm Josh Lipton in Silicon Valley. But not everyone was out shopping and looking for deals this Black Friday. Some were protesting about Walmart and the wages the world's largest retailer pays its employees. Eamon Jabbers was there. It's become the new Black Friday tradition. Union organized protests at Walmarts across the country to spur the giant retailer to boost pay for its associates. These protesters are walking from Capitol Hill over to the brand new Walmart here in Washington, D.C. And what they say they want are $15 an hour wages for the workers at Walmart. And they want more flexibility for the ability of the workers there to get a full 40 hour work week. A lot of the workers there, these guys say, aren't able to get enough hours in the week to have a real sustainable job and provide for their families. We met up with Melinda Gano, a D.C. resident who says her $9.90 hourly wage is not enough to keep her from being forced to collect federal food benefits to feed her family. I do depend on the government. I still yeah, I receive Medicaid and I also receive SNAP. But inside the store, other Walmart workers were getting on with the annual Black Friday sales and Walmart arranged for us to speak with a store manager, Ernest Reed. I make a pretty good wage. As far as I'm concerned, I make a livable wage. Walmart has afforded me the opportunity to make a livable wage. There are so many benefits for Walmart. In a statement, Walmart dismissed today's protests, saying perception is never reality with labor unions. The crowds are made up of paid union demonstrators, and they are not representative of our 1.3 million associates across the country. Union organizers today targeted the Walton family, which owns Walmart, saying the family is patting its $150 billion fortune on the backs of the majority of Walmart workers who make less than $25,000 a year. For Nightly Business Report, I'm Eamon Javers in Washington. And still ahead, there are deals to be found at stores today and a potential deal being reported in the telecom industry. We have the details next. Is Europe trying to force Google to split up? Well, not exactly, but European Union lawmakers are coming down hard on Google, looking to force the search giant to unbundle or break up its search engine from other services it offers because Google says the EU has just become too powerful. Well, Vodafone and Liberty Global rise on takeover buzz, and that is where we begin tonight's market focus. Vodafone reportedly exploring a combination with Liberty in a deal that would create Europe's largest phone, internet, and TV company. Uh, the company is trying to determine the financial and regulatory hurdles it would face if it goes ahead with the merger. No formal negotiations are underway yet. Shares of Vodafone rose 3% to $36.80. Liberty popped about 8%. It finished at 52 and a quarter. Procter & Gamble apparently working now with Goldman Sachs to sell one of its units, and a big one. This according to reports. Today, the company is exploring the sale now of its Wella hair care unit, which could fetch $7 billion. This is the consumer products giant looks to streamline its portfolio. Shares of P&G almost 2% higher. They finished at $90.58. Twitter's co-founder has sold some of his company stock for the first time. According to a filing, he divested more than 700,000 shares. That amounts to roughly more than $28 million. 
Shares of the social media company up 1% today. They finished at 41 63. Black Friday isn't uh, sure isn't the day uh, you want your website to crash, folks, especially if you're Best Buy. The electronics retailer's website did go down for more than an hour today as shoppers, it was a good reason, flooded the Internet looking for deals. The company said it was caused by a concentrated spike in traffic. I guess that's in the category of good problems to have. Shares at Best Buy up almost 2 percent. They finished at 39.50. Coming up, the big stores may be packed this Black Friday, but mom and pop shops are getting ready for their big day, Small Business Saturday. With the holiday shopping season officially underway, a lot of consumers are finding that toys are going Hollywood this year. Julia Borston looks at the big entertainment brands in the spotlight at toy stores. This holiday season, the most popular toys are going straight from the big screen to under the tree as Hollywood brands take the toy store spotlight. The boys action category, which is about a $2 billion category, licensed brands account for about 99% of that aisle. You walk down that aisle, it is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, it's Star Wars, it's Transformers, it's Spider-Man, uh, it's Batman, it's all licensed. Another aisle that is heavily licensed is the preschool aisle, where you have Jake, you have Doc McC Stuffins, you have Minnie Mouse. It can account for about 30 to 40 percent of all toy sales. The hottest of all the licensed brands, Disney's Frozen. Elsa hair. Oh, Elsa hair. Do you want Elsa dress? What else, Elsa? You already have it. Elsa. Uh, Chara. My nieces are obsessed with um, Frozen. Um, they were all Elsa and Anna for Halloween. So I could get them absolutely anything Frozen related and they would be thrilled. Toy industry expert Jim Silver says Frozen should bring Disney's licensees, primarily Mattel and Jack specific, as well as Hasbro, a total of half a billion dollars in wholesale revenue this holiday season. Frozen success this holiday bodes well for Hasbro, which is already benefiting from licensing Disney's Marvel brands. The toy maker has secured the licensing rights to Disney's Frozen and Princesses starting in 2016. Frozen is actually going to wind up being the number one movie property uh, for, for the toy industry this year, even though it'll be more than a year after it came out. That's, that's very unusual. It's kind of like what happened with, with Toy Story. It's what happened with cars, but it's not typically what happens with these things. But when it comes to competition for consumers' dollars, toys based on familiar characters have an advantage. They watch the shows and then, you know, anytime they see a commercial for the Disney anything they want that toy so <laughs> that's that's anything. that goes on the list anything disney yeah so most of the toys that we own are disney based mega holiday toy sales aren't just great for generating revenue they also keep brands alive and fans poised for sequels for nightly business report i'm julia borston in los angeles and finally tonight with so many people focused on black friday shopping at the nation's biggest retailers mom and pop stores are gearing up for their big day it's tomorrow small business saturday Kate Rogers has more. Sandwiched between two of the year's biggest shopping days, Black Friday and Cyber Monday, on Small Business Saturday, local shops get their chance to strike holiday gold. For owners like Guy Rosenstrike, who runs New York City jewelry store Phoenix Rose, it's the official kickoff for retail madness. So for the past two years, I'm seeing increasing sales on uh, Small Business Saturdays. We make everything by hand and everything is done here. And, you know, everything is made in basically the West Village and people like that. Anthony Cerrone, owner of Lilac Chocolates, is also feeling the community love. He says the American Express sponsored promotion brings added foot traffic for the 91-year-old Manhattan-based store which does about 20% of its annual sales between Thanksgiving and New Year's. 
It's one of our, our busiest Saturdays of the year, and um, it really kicks off our holiday season. And the holiday is certainly gaining traction. Last year, Small Business Saturday saw nationwide sales of $5.7 billion. But for Ron and Joan Fish, owners of Hampton House Furniture Store in Montclair, New Jersey, it's not so easy bringing in shoppers for big ticket items on Small Business Saturday. Unfortunately, we can't drive the customer into the store anymore. Um, when they're ready to shop, mm -hmm. they, they, they come in. So hard for us to, you know, br bring them in with any type of promotion. Promotions, however, are working for Phoenix Rose. Customers are finding out about the business on Instagram, where the store has more than 24,000 followers who will see the Small Biz Saturday deal this year. I'm doing an Instagram promotion, 10% 10, 10 uh, off everything in the store. And while not every business will see a big boost, the good news is that according to the National Retail Federation, nearly 75% of Americans plan to shop this Small Business Saturday. For Nightly Business Report, I'm Kate Rogers. And that'll do it for this edition of Nightly Business Report. I'm Tyler Matheson. Thanks so much for watching and continue to have a great holiday weekend, everybody. We'll hope to see you right back here Monday evening. Nightly Business Report has been funded in part by TheStreet.com and Action Alerts Plus, where Jim Cramer and fellow portfolio manager Stephanie Link share their investment strategies, stock picks, and market insights. You can learn more at TheStreet.com slash NBR. I'm Tyler Matheson with a nightly business report news brief. Another tumble in oil prices after OPEC voted not to cut production levels Thursday, despite lower demand and an oversupply on the market. Domestic crude down 10 percent. It closed at a four and a half year low, 66 bucks a barrel. On Wall Street, meantime, stock exchanges closed early on this Friday after Thanksgiving, ending the session mixed and little change. But the Dow gained just enough to close at a new all-time high. The Dow up a fraction of a point, NASDAQ four points higher. The S&P skidded five, but that marks six straight weeks of gains for those three major averages. And talk about bad timing. A flood of online shoppers looking for Black Friday bargains caused Best Buy's website to shut down for more than an hour today. And tune in to Nightly Business Report here on your public television station.